That's my bluebell ugly right there. She is pissed because her favorite nesting box is currently occupied. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog, y'all. Been fishing hardcore lately. Been fishing hardcore, um, and today is no exception. We're going out on the water again. Um, not going too far today. It's kind of a family day. Just coming off Guggen Week. Going to spend a little time with with the fam before we go out again. It's just, it's happening, y'all. It's happening, but I keep just running into bass. Everywhere I go, running bass. I had a good week this week, catching some some chunkies. Uh, and the, the crappie have just eluded me. Everywhere I go, it's um, it's like I hear they're, they're, they're not biting or they're, you know, they're gonna move up eventually. I don't, I don't know. This is just kind of a vlog. Uh, nothing specific in mind, but just hanging around the boat, rigging up some tackle right now. I'm gonna rig up a floater pole. 10 foot crappie pole. I've got three of my uh, other crappie poles, the micro sticks, ready to go as well. And then we got the bass rods ready to go in there. So just uh, just got a bunch more, more tackle from the Guggen HQ that just opened up, you guys. It is insane. If you, if you have not been up there, uh, it is completely different than the first years that we were open. We completely remodeled it. It looks awesome, we, and it is the biggest selection of Guggen products anywhere. So it is all in store. You can go uh, shop, shop to you drop. It is in the 30s right now. This is the coldest morning we've had by far in a long time. So I think that's probably going to throw off the bite quite a bit. But this is also just big fish season. I got to go try. So let's hit the water and see if we can get some fish on the line. We be floating. We be floating. I just talked to a fishing freak on the dock, and he was telling me he had a few bites this morning, bass-wise. And there's also a derby out here. There's a derb. What the deuce? Come out here. This lake has been fishing pretty, pretty crummy, but there are boats just uh, scattered everywhere. We got four boats right in this. The fishing has sucked here lately, and I think it's largely to do with the water clarity. Clarity has not been good. You know, cold and muddy do not fare well. Those two things together, very much bad. But cold and clear, you're all right. Cold and clear, you're in the clear. Cold and muddy, call a buddy. Hopefully we find some white bass today or some crappie. Maybe look into a large bass. Just kind of give it the gamut. Just this is considered my home lake, I guess. It's the lake I, I live closest to. So I like to come out here every once in a while, beat my head against the water, and uh, see if I can catch one. Just because it's, it's close, you know. That's what you do. That's what you do on your home lake. You go out there and you suffer it. Sometimes it's great. You embrace those memories, and then sometimes it's a turd bowl. All right, we're out of this no wake zone. I need to go find some brush piles that are yet to be marked on my graph. I have them in my mental graph up here, my mental GPS, but since I got the new boat, everything didn't trans over, transfer over from my hummingbird, and I need to make sure I relocate these brush piles, and we're gonna fish them uh, while we're there. If there's fish on them, we'll fish them. This summer, they're gonna be stacked. Okay, we got a few here on a brush pile. Don't look big, but we're gonna try to attack them with the old dart. Come on, eat it. Got him. 
There we go. There's that crappie. There's that crappy little dangle dart. No measure now, unfortunately. Mm, yeah, just a hair, hair under. Wow, breaking the crappie spell. That that little fish felt nice. Not gonna lie. Oh my gosh, it's like I sent the, that one back down and he said, nobody eat. Where are they? I can tell you right now, they're underneath the marinas. So may go give that a shot if I have to, but it's so hard to get to. Better off like getting off and just walking the marina. Because they're just sitting right under the walkway. Just so you guys know what the bottom looks like right now. Pretty much all over the lake in 20 feet. You've got shad and micro white bass just going crazy. It's making it hard to really decipher what is going on. What is going on? Alright, so I'm going to try to target some of these floaters. See if we can find a floater or two. That's a big floater there. Basically try to get up on them with, with a bait, with a crappie jig, and just hover it. Big. That makes me think those are the bass right there. Right out in front. Okay, y'all, this is getting to be ridiculous. On this crappie, it's not fun mode. They're stacked up under these docks where I, I'm, I'm trying to shoot my little jig up under there, but it's like five foot short, you know, and they're just not, they're not coming out. I tried to find floaters, I can't find them floaters. I just need to sit down and rig something up. I'm gonna rig up a bass rod. This is describing my last three weeks of my life. Literally just uh, taking the crappie rods. I end up getting the bass itch because I can't get on the crappie and then I catch bass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 10 pound fluoro off of here and replace it with some braid. Just not a huge fan of fluoro on uh, spinning anymore unless it's like ultra clear water, which I'm hardly ever fishing. Tackle rigging therapy, that's what this is. So, I'm on a lake that is a, is a good shaky head lake, can be. There's a lot of rock. It's not very good water clarity, but you know, these fish are, it's 55 degree water right now. So jerk bait would be wonderful. All right, water clarity is not the best, but get a jerk bait around some of the points for bass. And then when you get in a spot where it looks like it might be kind of a bedding area here in a few weeks, drag something around. You can, you can throw a weightless bait as well but anytime I've got like a, a gradual slope bank with some decent rock on it, I like to throw a shaky head or a jig. 
something that is making contact with those rocks, making the little tick, 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 tick noise. And the fish hear that and they come over and they, uh, they investigate. And sometimes they slurp it in their face. All right, so I'm going to leave a little bit of that braid on there, or a little bit of that fluoro, probably a quarter spool of it. All right, these 2,500 size reels that we have, there's gonna be no way that I'm gonna cast all the braid off here. Fluoro going in the trash. And we're gonna be replacing that with 20 pound Guggen Squad braid. This is an eight strand. You guys a lot of times see it on my spinning reels, it's yellow, this is the same stuff. It's just, uh, I got a, a yellow high-vis sample. I really liked it. And I've been using that a lot, but I'm, I'm out I'm out of 20 pounds. So this is, uh, this is the same stuff, just green color. <sighs> Tournament going on, boats everywhere, bassin', but what, what are we gonna do? sunny and no wind. It's beautiful. All right, fluoro connection. When I spool up my spinning rods, I go through the first eye. First eye, give it a little pressure. Put the spool flat on the ground with that eye right above it. All right, that should do it. All right, we got a braid and I tied another leader knot and I've got 15 pound fluorocarbon as a leader. It may seem a little big for shaky heads, but when I'm shaky heading in Texas or anywhere that has bigger fish in it, you know, potential to get a five, eight pound fish, I put 15, 15 pound on because I have broken off so many times throwing 12. Um, spinning rod obviously helps with that, having a good drag on it. But even then, you get that good thump, just like a jig bite, get excited. <laughs> It's over. So I do 15 pound um, springtime when you got the potential to get a big one. Now, something you guys probably haven't seen yet is, well maybe you haven't seen this box, but also we have some shaky heads now. And I'm looking for, yeah, let me do a, ooh, a 3 16 That little bad boy right there. That's nice. We've actually uh, labeled them just like our other jigs so you know what size they are. And it's got a swinging screw lock on it. And someone in the office gave me some prototype worms, so why not? Let's throw one of those. Finesse style. All right, so that's hinged on there. We're just going to skin hook it a little bit right there. That's all it is. Look at that little wiggle. Mm. Okay, I'm probably gonna put some hot butt on the back of that. A little bit of hot butt. bites on that little worm.
Oh, there's that bite again. Fish has got it. Oh my gosh. This might be like a deep bedding fish go. For real. So it just knocked the thunder off of it right there. I think that's what's going on here. First time I just took the tail, it's definitely not a bluegill. Oh my gosh. Well, the micros are out. Goodness. Look, that one's been eaten. Attempt, attempted eat. I'm telling you, that first thump I got was hefty. Oh, I just hooked up on the shaky head, guys. And I think it's a hoss. Oh, yeah, it's a big, 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 big one. Just spit up a shad. I just, I just threw up on a pole. My line started racing. Gundo, baby. Jigundo down the hatch. Come here. This is why we use that 15 pound test I was talking about. Oh, yeah. That thing is gone. Absolutely gone. Give me that thing back, please. All right, that's out. There we go, look at that fish, nice. All right, you guys, I'm gonna let this fish go. He had it absolutely throated. it. That's about a four pounder right there. Whew. On that new little proto worm, crazy. But that right there, that tiny little bait, got him to eat. Let this fish go right here. See ya. See ya. Nice, 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 nice. Oh my gosh. Happening to me so many times. Go crappie fishing. Just catch catch chunks. Just catch chunks. That fish right there hit it on the way down. I saw a fish on a on a post on a pole, and there was just crappie up underneath the dock. Couldn't get though. So I just flicked this little worm out there, and as it was going down, the fish chased it down right at the bottom, and then boom! I mean, my line was screaming away. That's why I use that 15 pound test, guys, because that fish had that, that bait really deep. And if I was throwing like 12, you know, and I was kind of looking away and then I look back and I saw my line just moving, it's a reaction hook set. I just jerk into them. That's why I like to have that 15. It's thicker and it really helps with the abrasion resistance when you start talking about those bigger bass. You know, they get over three pounds, they get it all the way in their mouth. And you gotta think, when you're setting the hook, it's not just like the fish just has the lure, like right here. The fish goes, has it all the way down. And when you, when you sweep fluorocarbon across a fish's teeth, it's like thick, heavy, like 40 grit sandpaper, and it will, it will break a lot of smaller lines. So it's not necessarily for the, the, the strength, like the break strength, it's for, the thickness of the 15 pound test to hold up to that. That's why I do it. Gosh, absolute Megalodon cruising around here. Absolute Megalodon. About to flick this jerk bait over its head. It's a giant floater. I made a big one. Just poke this thing out here. See what this fish does. Oh my gosh, it's a magnum. It's probably
probably a 40 pound carp. Can't wait to hook it. Oh my gosh, this fish is on my jig. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's about to eat it. Oh my gosh, it's, this is a giant bass. This is a giant bass. Nose up on it, nose, I mean it's nosed. It's nosed y'all, it's following it. It's right there on it, it's a giant, it's a giant. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was a freaking space cadet. That was a giant absolute helmet. Holy spittoons. Just came right up there to that jig. Don't want to jerk, babe. Came right up there to the jig. <clears throat> a little crappie fishing. And that's what you come up with. That's what I come up with when I when I crappie fish nowadays. Unreal. Look at this cool fish, guys. Ah. Just caught that off a brush pile. Chunky fat, and it's got three spots on the side. Got him on the old grubby. There we go chubby grubby in that toxic waste color oh there's got a couple more spots on the other side that's really crazy oh my gosh i just can't catch crop but i saw a couple blobs in the brush pile i thought there might be a big crappie in there and uh that's what it was look at that man that's just so cool all right, we'll let you go. We'll let you go. We'll let you grow. Ah! Put it back in the water right here. Are you ready? Yeah, look at those polka dots swim off. That. Fate. Ooh. Ooh, man, I wish that was a crappie, though. Because that would definitely be my three pound uh, goal. There. Guys, got some floaters, man. What's going on? Got some floaters. Got some green fish hanging around. It's a weird bank. There's like nothing on it. The crappie. They remain a mystery. But the bass, they come in there like an old love story. I just, I love it. You gotta smash the like button for that. I'm gonna make a couple more casts with my little worm buddy here. On this point where I just saw a blue hair on take off he's hunting he's, he's getting some chads oh one's coming there got him oh that might be a big one this could be the one. Oh yeah yeah, you know, you know what I'm about. Live scoping catfish is what I do. Oh yeah, what a day under that is. Oh my gosh. I literally thought to myself, God, that looks like a catfish. Looks like a catfish on a brush pile. Look at him just pooping out. I swear. The king, the king of the cats on the live scope. My goodness. Wanted it, wanted it so bad he, he was pooping himself. Oh god, there's a, there's a couple little swimmers down there though that I like, I like looking at them. I hung it, I hung the brush. It's gonna do it. Mm. Oh, time to get home to mama and the kids.
coming to see what has been done to the yard while I've been gone. My old lady, she's uh, she's getting into gardening, building a little garden area. Chickens, what have we produced today? What have we produced? Let's go check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means nobody's in the nesting box and there should be some nuggets. And there they be. One, two, three, four, five. Five eggs in one day. Y'all have done a pretty good job. There's my, little, there's my little frizzle. There's my little frizzle, no longer broody. Got her off the broody train. And Colonel Sanders, I'll tell you what, y'all. When I come in here and I feed these chickens now and I turn my back, he charges me. He charges me, he tries to jump up and kick me like a, like a crazy chicken. So he might be chicken, chicken and dumplings here soon. I don't know. Hate to see it, but don't want him attacking the kids. Well, how'd you do? No golden crispies today. Oh no! But it did catch a couple nice bass. Oh, well, that's good. It's good enough, right? <laughs> yeah, they just keep, they just keep getting on the line. I can't shake them off, so might as well reel them in, give them a sniff. Where's my favorite little girl? Yeah, <laughs> there I am. Amy wanted me to share this picture with you guys. She said, I gotta bring it back. She said she wanted the fishing freaks to see it. She said, can you show it to all the Googans and the, and the fishing people? I said, yes, I will. So she made this. These are Googan stickers from the HQ. And it's a heart, y'all. She decorated it. With, uh, with all Guggen stickers, she's got a bass in there, she's got a couple bandito bugs, a trench hog, she got a striper, it says dangler on it. Look at that, how cute is that? So I gotta do some pleading, but what I wanted to do was was tape that up inside of my, my, uh, my big bait box in there, my big lid, tape it inside so when I'm on the road dangling, I can always remember my sweet little girl at home. There it is, smash that like button for it. Today was a, mm, a, mi a mix match of dangling. Uh, I did get one crappie on the line, but I'm waiting for him to get on the bank, y'all. And it, looking through my logs, it's looking like for most of the lakes around here, that's gonna be here in a couple weeks. <sighs> but the bass fishing has been good and I'm about to hit the road and do some more of it. So stay tuned for more of that. And I, I will be on them crappies, trust me. I'm, I'm going out and I'm checking frequently uh, to see when they're on the bank. But now it looks like they're still, they're still kind of hovering, just waiting to move up. But thank you all for tuning in today. If you want to get any of the stuff, uh, any of the new Guga baits, also spring gear launching um, the 21st or 22nd of this month. So uh, we got the new shorts, the, all the new patterns. Uh, all that stuff's going to be available very shortly. You can use my code LFG to save and check out. Thank y'all for being here, and I will see you back on the water for another adventure.